people of Dunbar. Don't go to hell. Do not forget what is happening here. Nobody should have to go through this. This is going to a special forces unit that actually is all Ukrainian, it's their alpha unit. What we've got here is a 44 tourniquets, and it's hyphen chest seals, chest wound seals. A lot will end up with an American combat medic. Nearly a year ago, what I was able to conclude is that if we do not sink all of our resources into the front line, all of the resources that are being spent off the front line will not matter because none of those people will be here. So, all of these things are useful to you? Yes. Okay. Uh, my name is Rebecca Masharowski. I'm from Denver, Colorado. Um, I'm here working as a combat medic. Uh, I've been here since um, March 2022. Yep, then we've got hyphens and a stack of, I think it's like between 30 and 40. Um, that's a real thing, right? I wanted to help, and a lot of people just kind of watch, and I didn't want to be one of those people. So I wrote to Ministry of Health, and I asked if I could assist, and they said yes. No, the rhinos are also used for yeah. They're like a piece of shit. Yeah. Is there anything that you want to say to... Um... Yes. Do not forget what is happening here. Everybody's gone on with their lives, but these guys are fucking dying every day. Every fucking day people are dying here. And nobody gives a fuck. Not that I can see. Send legitimate medical supplies. And if you can't figure out how to fucking... Just... Stop sending cheap shit. This is a fucking tourniquet. This is somebody's fucking life. And if you can't cough up the 30 bucks for it that you could spend on Starbucks in three days, something is very wrong with you. That's it. Drones have been absolutely incredible for um, the Ukrainian military. And they've been extremely effective at making them cheap commoditized weapons. It's just surreal to be driving through a wild rapeseed field when it's just quiet and you see an occasional babushka. And it's just quiet, but about a kilometer to our left is literal trench warfare going on right now. What's happening in Polandar right now? It is under siege. Uh, it's actually one of the hottest zones, underreported, not talked about because everybody's busy talking about Bakhmut. Well, there's a thousand kilometers of front line. That's really fucking That's close. right here. Yeah, exactly. That is really fucking close. Yes, is. This is a blown out bridge on our right. And then this is the... Right now we are okay. in the in the calm area. In the calm area. Yes, just, calm area. It's yeah. this this calm area. Compared to another area, this is calm. And how close are we to? One kilometer. One kilometer. Yes, one kilometer from the front line. To mortify.
There's a information of a rocket attack in this position. They said they want us to keep away from the windows and, and the doors. Copy. По два-три человека, чтобы не все их купили. Да, по два-три Давайте так само. Пойдем. До побачения. Давайте, давайте. SD? Mm -hmm. One, maybe. One. One. Thank you. And, uh, you. Sorry, I, I, this is my personal drone, so... Like, personal, no, ah. it's your last name. Very, very thank you. No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good last name. Currently, I'm with the 131st um, Separate uh, Battalion. And we are a reconnaissance battalion, so we actually work under military intelligence. And uh, they brought me in to help train their guys up specifically for CQB, which is close quarters battle, uh, fighting inside of houses, you know, small buildings, industrial complexes, that kind of stuff. Uh, because that's literally the most dangerous type of battlefield. It requires a lot, a lot of training. Um, they say 80 hours is a bare minimum, you know, 600 hours is kind of where you get to that expert level. Stuff walking around yeah, in the bushes. We were figuring something out. Yeah. There's a total of about 3,500 to 4,000 troops that I've trained since I've been here, somewhere in that number. That training is, is helping immensely, you know, um, because these guys are so dedicated and eager to learn. They were really fast forwarding a lot of programs that we thought was going to take six weeks. We can now do it in three. And what they're fighting for, being there's a sovereign nation, they want the rights to, you know, to be gay, to be straight, to go to what church they want to, to vote for who they want to, to say you have the right to do that without persecution. I was able to get, uh, make a contract with uh, our higher ups that we can form a foreign unit under a Ukrainian battalion. So, so far it's worked pretty good. We got our two, we got our two teams. So, team of six and a team of five. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> terrain. So, we're going through abandoned houses. There are civilians here, so be aware. Uh, they've taken a lot of civilians that, you know, locals that uh, never been in war before and trained them up. Uh, a lot of uh, foreigners have helped with that side too. You dropping kid at the rendezvous point? What? Are we dropping? Yes, we are. All right. Something that I noticed here almost immediately that Ukraine and Ukrainians have this ability to improvise, adapt, and overcome unlike anything I've ever seen. I feel privileged and honored to be serving with most of these guys. It's nothing short of amazing. What were the professions? 
that you've trained? Yeah, I've... artists, taxi drivers, big businessmen of any kind, you know, business owners. You've got guys that, I mean, I was training guys that one would say he was an archaeologist. <laughs> so he was digging, he was digging up pottery and bones, and now he's carrying, carrying a, uh, an AK-74. You know, guys were students, you know, some of them were mu musicians, artists, um, shopkeepers, plumbers. Basic hand signals, I want to see fucking tic-tac-toeing at the race course, all right? I want to see halt, I want to see move, I want to see enemy over there at a number, okay? Are you here for enemy? All right, thumbs down. Oh, okay. Friendlies up, thumbs down. Push comes to shove, I'm anti-war, all right? But, you know, my moral compass says here that I've got to take part and do something with it um, because of my previous history, skill set and whatever. Um, I gave up a very good career, um, a very good life. Um, to come here, um, you know, everything. And I did it with a whole heart um, to help the people here. I mean, I was here, you know, February last year um, from the off and I started off with humanitarian aid. Um, and slowly, you know, from that humanitarian aid, what I saw turned into, you know, just, just, just dislike of what was going on. And there's so much more I could be doing. So now I've moved into a combat phase um, and yeah, I'm doing the things that should be done. If someone's gonna sit there and ask for help, like, I need help, help me. And they can stand up and put their hand up like that, like, you answer that call if you have that ability. So, you know, they said this is what they need, and I came here. If Russia were to prevail here, it would be Poland, Romania, I mean, Moldova would probably fall immediately, but mm -hmm. it, it's the rest of Europe, and then the rest of the world, or the West, at least. I, I have no doubt about that. If it doesn't stop here, it won't stop. Right now, Ukraine isn't just the shield for the rest of Europe, it's the shield for the rest of the world. My uh, bachelor's degree was in mathematics. And uh, master's, master's in molecular biology. Of, uh, because uh, I do all this, and I do not have time to study. Вінницькому осередку забезпечення військових медикал оф Україн, а також. I don't have uh, medical uh, education, so uh, every, uh, everything I can do uh, to do my uh, work properly is uh, based on the, what I hear from uh, real medics, from real situation in the world. And you went to the front line, you went to near Bakhmut one, one time, one time. to talk to them to say, what do you need? Yeah. You came back. Exactly. This stuff costs money. How did you get all this stuff? How did you get the money for this? Before, I, I didn't know even what, what is tourniquet and what is uh, burn shield. She does specific fundraising for different medical supplies. Most of it is done here in Ukraine, mm -hmm. but there are two organizations that are beyond the border, mm -hmm. right? From uh, United States, uh, that's uh, Assist Ukraine, mm -hmm. uh, American uh, uh, charity organization. Mm -hmm. And the, the second is uh, Basil, uh, of uh, Ukrainians, uh, uh, community of Ukrainians in Basel, uh, Switzerland. Switzerland. I, I'm quite independent from the money we raise. And that's a very important point because we can be transparent in, in our f finances. Part, partly because of this uh, uh, financial support I have for my friends and my brother. I work for Paramoha for the victory of Ukraine and uh, if um, if it if duration to Paramoha to victory uh, will be maybe to, uh, 10 years or, or maybe much more years uh, I will do this and only this
those houses are straight up under fucking water. So we're approaching the river. And then that's the fucking bridge right there. I'm just a person. I'm not a foundation or anything. I'm just, I'm here on my own. I've been here for 14 months since the beginning of the war. I started in Mikolev at the front line. And once the front line moves, I move with the front line. And I'm just here to help the people. The war started and I just decided that they need help. I came by myself. I've never been to Ukraine. I didn't know the language. Because before you know it, I'm serving 1,500 people a week, every week. The people here need help. That's the bottom line. Like, it's bad. Like, you know, there's bombs every night, stuff every night. Stuff goes on every single day here in Kyrgyzstan. In Mikolev, when I was there, it was every single day. There was no relaxed time. All babushkas and dadushkas, which means grandmothers and grandfathers, a lot of the kids have left, you know. Either they're fighting or they're somewhere else in the country because they didn't want them here. They don't want them to go through this. And these people are all here by themselves. And this is what I'm here for. Not leaving. Not leaving no matter what. If they would have left, they would have been gone by now. They're not leaving. They'll, they'll go through hell. When I mean hell, they'll go through hell. Look at all the drones going. There's one, there's two, there's three, there's four, there's five drones. Oh, there's another one. There's six or seven. There's eight or nine. This is no joke. That's 12 drones. That's 15 drones. Let's see if there's any more coming. Падайте вот здесь, там, блядь, не 